very much. Thank you very much. And that's the nicest thing that anyone's hey, ever folks, done Hey, folks, in 10TN2. We're talking about Christmas miracles today. Part two. Part two. Uh, amazing stuff, man. This is, uh, we're in the 12 days of Christmas right now. And we're doing the countdown. And that wonderful day will be here before you know it. And I was just going through some some notes. I'm on day 54 of the spiritual transformation. And, of course, I rewired my subconscious mind from all negative programming. and. Go through the videos to see some of the incredible stories that are coming through. They're just amazing uh, to listen to and to hopefully inspire you to see that you need to do this too and stop being uh, an, the attractor factor for negative consequences. Um, you don't have to live in a sheltered life like that. That is what this series is all about. It's part of the Health and Wealth Challenge series of uh, videos. You can always find us on Facebook. And we got a private and uh, public group. And we have our own YouTube channel. So I'm an XR director from Chicago in New York City. And I'm working with uh, mind, body, spirit, consciousness. And we do business uh, strategies and online strategies with my other company called The Win. So welcome today. Christmas miracle number two. What do you think about miracles? Do you believe in them? Do you think they're possible? Or uh, is that something that only exists in movies, comic books, and kid stories? You know, what are your what are your thoughts about the supernatural? I have been fortunate enough to have experienced these different type of uh occurrences. And I got to tell you, the, the world's a, a very unique and awesome place. I like to put my thought into complete belief and acceptance that these things are real. Now, today's story goes back about a good 13 years ago. And I was working in East Lansing, Michigan, for a home improvement company. And I grabbed one of my business associates <laughs> to go down there for the final year's uh, meeting. We got to pick up a check for our holiday pay, and that was going to end up our year. So uh, we drove down in separate cars, and we met at a Myers parking lot and uh, jumped in my car because I had a newer car than my buddies. <laughs> it's, it, and I'll get to that in a minute. And then we drove down to my client's place. We got out. We were all dressed up. And we uh, walked in, did a little presentation. We picked up our last check for the year. And uh, and we started making our way out the door. Uh, interestingly enough, my client, I might have rubbed off on him a little bit because he was a very angry guy. And I remember he was uh, he attempted a smile at me. And it kind of freaked me out because he was he was really an angry guy. And I, I couldn't tell if he was trying to be sarcastic or if he was trying to be, uh, you know, genuine. And I remember he gave me the check and I'm kind of like, OK, well, thank you. I'll see you later. And I and I left because uh, he was trying, trying to force to smile like, you go, OK, you know, and uh, very uneasy to say the least, but uh, we parted on good terms and I, we were out the door. Anyway, we get to the car. Now my buddy's car uh, was like uh, a rolling trash heap. <laughs> I mean, not the outside was bad. Obviously it needed some work, but the inside was just filled from the floor to the ceiling with garbage. I mean, pretty much. Oh, yeah, like Dorito bags in there, Papa John boxes from pizza, you know, uh, takeout orders from you name it. Everything was in there. Domino's, Papa John's, probably uh, Jets. And uh, wow, just amazing. Coke cans, beer cans, newspapers, <laughs> burger wrappers, <laughs> Arby's wrappers. There might have even have been some uh, Roy Rogers roast beef wrappers in there. No, I'm 
kidding. That goes back a long time ago. But you get the point. I mean, it was like the filthiest car I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, I mean, it was. And I, I'd been around some crazy neighborhoods and knew some crazy guys, but that was the dirtiest car I've ever seen in my life. So he goes to grab his keys and he, he puts them inside the, the driver's side door. <laughs> And the keys got locked in, in the, in the igni uh, not ignition, the, the lock, the door lock, horrible. And he twisted it, and he couldn't pull his keys out. <laughs> now, think about this for a second. The energy was so bad around this car, so terrible, that there was like this level of uh, dysfunctionality, if you will. Very toxic energy. Couldn't get his keys out. Now, some of you guys out there might agree, and you can only answer this yourself. I'm not going to finger point anybody that I know. You could probably use some some uh, some spiritual Drano <laughs> in your cosmic field, right? Uh, give yourself a cosmic flush. Your energy is that bad. You know, it's funny because energetically, you can have things like breakdowns with your cars and certain areas of your life, finances. Clutter is a place where the devil likes to thrive. He likes confusion. He likes clutter. He lives for that. Catherine Ponder tells it like this and her laws of prosperity that you can actually clean out uh, clutter in your life. Uh, it could be anything, your office, uh, your computer, it could be your, uh, your desk, your living space. And new energy will actually come through. And prosperity comes with that. I always heard that nature abhors a vacuum. You've probably heard that before. So whenever there's an empty space, energetically, energy has to fill it, either good or bad. And in this particular case, we had to get all the junk cleared out. But first, before we get to that level, we had to clean out the car. Actually, get into the car, I should say. So we're sitting there trying to figure this out. And we pulled on it, we pulled on it, we pulled on it. My buddy tried it. He tried to put his hands on it and try to twist it and turn it. He couldn't, he couldn't do it. I tried to do it. Couldn't get it to budge. Finally, uh, we pulled too hard on it. <laughs> we pulled the we pulled the lock right out of the door, and it was like it was like wires, like this. It was like it was like you know, oh, what's this? And it was like a you know, it's terrible. Keys are hanging off the end of it, and and the lock and everything. The whole thing was just soldered together, like it was just tight. Anyway, we knew we were screwed. The sun's going down. And I want to say it was like Christmas Eve. Was, <laughs> people are going home to their families. And here we are stuck in the parking lot. And uh, that was a tense moment. So I um, told my friend to, uh, I'm just looking at my notes to make sure I didn't forget anything because it was a crazy moment. I took some notes. All right. I'm not going to do the exercise in full because I'm going to respect your time. But I'm going to keep this video down to 10 minutes. I always say that, but I had a tendency to ramble. I told him not to laugh. I said, step back. Let me do this thing. And I, I did this exercise right in front of him. And it was very important I told him not to laugh. And I pulled the energy from the top of my crown chakra all the way up. I rooted my feet into the earth and I got myself toned up. All my seven chakras are all lined up, ready to go. And I focused and I breathed in this positive energy and I actually exhaled this negative energy around the lock, around the car, around the whole thing. And Focusing on my third eye, I put my hand right on the, the keys. I closed my eyes. 
and I, I went, pop, I pulled it right out. <laughs> First try. That's directive force, directive energy. These are techniques that we teach in our courses. His jaw only hit the floor. And he said, how in the heck did you do that? Wow, how did you do that? And I gave him his check for working with me and for the end of the year. I said, I'll teach it to you one day. I said, go home to your family. Tell your family, I said, Merry Christmas. And I sent him on his way. Wow. So he did. He, he left. I got in my car. And I drove home. And on the way home, I was just thinking about the heavens and energy and cosmic energy and personal energy that you have around you. And I was still learning. I'm, and I'm still learning now. But I was learning about energetic forces and negativity and clearing space and moving forward and overcoming obstacles. All praise through God. And we got to remember that we are created in God's likeness and that we too can do awesome and incredible things as Christ promised us. During these holy days of Hanukkah and Christmas, and of course, Advent and all that, I want you to be thankful for what you have. Gratitude is the first thing. You've got to be grateful for whatever you have. Because remember, what we always say here on the show is you are surrounded by what you create. That is my second Christmas miracle for you. Uh, we're going to go and learn more things throughout the week. But I want you to check out the other video we just did, too about the Christmas miracle that happened to me in Ann Arbor when I met two angels. Interesting stuff. Expand your consciousness. Expand your mind to accept these incredible gifts that we have, mind, body, and spirit. There's things that we can't see in this life, that uh, the energy that's around us, that's important to tap into. So... Until we meet next time, I am Ted Cantu. I'm, uh, if you have any questions at all, if you got any personal traumas you're trying to get through during this rough holiday season, it's always, it's rough for some people. And uh, it's not always joyous for everybody. And I understand that. And if you have any concerns or questions or things you'd like to talk about to me personally, you can always give me a call, 248-277-6141. You can always find me online at tedcantu.com. And you can even find me on email, if that's more convenient for you, at tedcantu at gmail.com. I want to thank you for watching today, and I wish you a wonderful holiday season.